spicy crystals. Let's talk spicy crystals. Do you know what spicy crystals are? That is my name for radioactive minerals. Let's talk about it because there is a whole collector subgroup that collects radioactive minerals. Today, I'm going to teach you about them. These are probably minerals you don't want to meditate with. You probably don't want to use them in your crystal practice. So I'm going to teach you about them today. All right, let's get into it. Now, before we begin, there is a lovely group on Reddit. It's radioactive minerals that you can join. And there's a lot of collectors in there and people that talk about safe handling of radioactive minerals. At Bella Luna, I chose not to carry radioactive minerals. It's just not something I'm very interested in selling. There are specialty sellers that specialize in this. I am not one of those people. Too many people in my family have died of cancer, so... I would just prefer to have the limit, the amount of radiation I'm exposed to, if possible. Now, we're all exposed to certain amounts of radiation every day. What's really important to remember is that there's a component of dosage and duration. Even things like bananas have an element of radiation. So it's really about how much do we receive and for how long is when we start getting into that component of where it becomes dangerous. So it's important to know that. And what those limits are are defined and different based on the country you live in. So that's gonna play a part in it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully based on science and safety. Now, a lot of people have asked me before too, they're like, Bella, well, what about smoky quartz or, or a mineral that receives radiation in the ground? And that is what affects the color and how it comes out. Now, studies have been done on those minerals that were radiated in the ground and that affected their color and their crystal lattice and have shown that they're safe to handle and hold, that they're not actively emitting dangerous amounts of radiation like radioactive minerals do. So that is okay in terms of if they receive that in the ground. And many minerals do get that depending on where they are. It doesn't mean that they're going to actively emit radiation once they are out of the earth. The minerals I'm going to cover today for you, well, they do, friends. So these are things that you'd want to store in what's called a lead pig. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is one from a company called Nuclear Shields. They do sell the lead vial pigs. And then depending on the specimen size and the type of specimen, how much radiation it emits, you might want to store it in one of these devices. And since I've got my screen share going, I do want to talk to you about this website. This is a U.S.-based website. This is the nrc.gov, and you can find it through a quick Google search, nrc.gov, uh, irradiated gemstones. This is a really good fact sheet because this is a government agency that regulates radiation in terms of gemstones. And now, not the minerals I'm going to speak about today are, are used in gemstones, but I think this is a really good read if you're concerned. Actually, I'll put the link for it directly to it into the description so that you can read through it if you want to learn a little bit more about radiation and its relationship in gemstones and how it's monitored here in the U.S. Today, I'm going to be using MindDat. MindDat is a nonprofit mineral resource website that I highly recommend you consider donating to if you use the website at all. I do make yearly donations to MindDat. They are a nonprofit and they put out so much wonderful free mineral education. So I want to shout them out. I'm going to put a link below. If you're a crystal shop and you have some extra money to donate, this is a great place to do it. So first up is our friendly mineral here, Torbernite. This is a radioactive mineral. Next up, Uranio Surcite. This one's beautiful, though. I'm just really assisted. It's always a shame when the pretty ones are radioactive. So, yep, this one's next. Next is uraninite, and this actually, when we have this petroidal formation, it looks like a couple other minerals that are not radioactive, so be careful with this one. Next up, mediatorbernite, say that five times fast. Uh, you see, again, a little theme here, kind of this neonish color to them. Not always, but definitely seeing a little neon color. And next up, autunite, again, beautiful crystal formations, radioactive. And lastly, this one might shock you a little bit, but I don't want you to freak out because not all cherolite specimens could be radioactive. 
but I've been reading in some of the rock hounding groups. And I just wanted to share the information with you as like an FYI, if you have Chero White in your mineral shop or you're a collector, I have been told, and I'm going to show you here, see how these are kind of more like a yellow, These when they have that yellow in them, you don't see it in all specimens. I have been told that those yellow inclusions could be radioactive. I have seen a few videos of people testing it with a Geiger counter and showing that some Chero White can. Other mineral collectors say it's not enough, no more than what a banana has. Bananas also uh, can show up on a Geiger counter, very, very small amount. So it's nothing really to worry about unless you grind it or you're like, you know, you smell or get involved with the dust of Chero White. But I did want to bring it up just to mention it because it's kind of floating around in the mineral world, but there's no real definitive on that one just yet. Just something to be mindful of. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with a really fun radioactive mineral story just to, you know, spice up the video. So I'm in a lot of rock hound groups and I do recommend the Reddit groups for rock hounds. There is one specifically I'll reference in this video, which is the radioactive minerals group. And I'm in one of the groups and somebody posts that they had purchased a large rock collection from a rock hound and that the rock hound gave them a mineral in a lead pig. And the person didn't know what a lead pig was, which is okay. You know, that's how we learn. And they were asking in the group, they're like, what is this thing? The rock hound, the older man told me to keep it in here, but didn't say much else. And everyone's commenting, looking at the mineral saying, yeah, that's a radioactive mineral. You keep it in the lead pig. And so the moral of that story, if the old rock hound dude says to keep it in the lead pig, you keep it in the lead pig. So be careful with these minerals. Be cautious if you see them out and about. You probably don't want to collect these unless you are a hardcore radioactive mineral collector. You know to handle how to handle them properly. You know how to store them properly. Definitely not novice crystals to handle. All right, friends. I hope you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about crystals, hit that like button. Give me a follow. That helps my channel grow. Comment if you have questions or what you thought about the video. That also helps the YouTube algorithm get me moving. I am also on TikTok and Instagram, and I also do crystal life sales on Instagram. All right, friends, have a beautiful day.